Using GitHub is a daily part of my workflow, and I think it should be a part of your workflow too, whether or not you work with code at all. So let's check it out. Source control is a major part of DevOps and the CI CD pipeline. And even if you're new to code or software development, this is still something that you can use immediately right away because it's not a tool that's just reserved for software development environments. When I started writing PowerShell scripts, I wouldn't really call that software development. I was just kind of automating some basic workflow tasks by stringing PowerShell commands together. And next thing I knew, I had a fully automated task and a script that handled that for me. So. I started thinking about ways that I could maintain versions or if I needed to roll back and that's exactly what source control is all about. Let me show you. So let's take this for example. Here's you. You are a network engineer and you work on a team of network engineers. That makes sense, right? So far so good. And you've been tasked with creating a basic automation script. So you bust out your little VS code editor and you write a Python script, maybe it does something as simple as uh, connects to a list of network devices and just backs up their configuration files. Well, this is all well and good, but what happens when other people want to access your Python script? You wrote it on your local computer uh, and now you need to get it to, into other people's hands. Well, you could store it on something like a centralized file share, but then what happens when people make changes to the Python script? Well, if they change the Python script, are they typing in the comments? Are they making sure they're typing in this is version two or version three and that we, you know, added a print statement? Are they typing this stuff? Probably not. You can't keep track of who's doing what and when in this centralized environment. Beyond that, you don't have the ability to roll back to previous versions. And that's one of the things that Git and source control in general seek to solve. So with using a tool like source control with Git or Azure DevOps, for instance, we can now turn this Python script into like a working tree where each one of these little circles here represents a version or a change that someone has made. So when our junior network admin here at the bottom of the screen makes a change in version three that creates a infinite while loop and breaks our entire script and hogs up all our RAM or something, uh, we can easily roll back to a previous version of the script. Beyond that, we can track who's doing what and when with what comments they've added to the script too. So this is all well and good, but Git takes it even a step further and creates what's called a distributed source control. Here's the idea with that. We'll start with one base Python file here. You've created this Python script and you've put it in the central place. What people can then do is they can copy copy this or what they call cloning it to their local computer. So all of our network engineers can clone the original Python script to their local computer and then they can create their own versions of this script as they go. And once they get their script into a version of it that they like, they can then push these changes back into the master Python script and synchronize all of the changes that way. So when this central location gets updated, Everybody on their individual machines can pull down the updated changes over time. That way, multiple people can work on the same script on their local computer, test and debug it on their local computer without altering the main master script until they're finally ready to do so. And then when they do, the changes can be synchronized across the way. Now, it can get even more sophisticated than that with things like branches. And ultimately, that's what I'm going to leave you to go check out Ben Finkel's content as part of the DevNet Associate exam training on CBT Nuggets. Truthfully, that's some of the best content on our entire CBT Nuggets catalog is the Git and GitHub content that Ben teaches. So if you haven't checked it out yet, if you haven't checked out the DevNet Associate exam training playlist on CBT Nuggets, I'd encourage you to hop over to cbtnuggets.com right now and get that free trial started. But you want to see it in action? You want to see how I use it every day? Here we go. All you have to do is go to github.com and create an account. It's free. And you can even use this GitHub account to sign in to the DevNet Sandbox. Pretty fancy. Once you've created your free GitHub account, you want to create a new repository. This is where you're going to be able to store all of your code. You want to keep this project specific. And what's pretty cool is the way your URL is actually going to work is it's github.com slash then your username, in my case, it's datanox, then slash the repository name. That's the actual URL. So let's take the Meraki PowerShell repository that I've been working on. I'm making a series of PowerShell commandlets specific to Meraki. I'm writing this in 
C sharp. So if I click on that, this repository that I've created here, let's pretend for a moment now that I, this is one that I wanted to clone to my local computer and make changes on my local computer and then push them back into this GitHub repository. So what are the tools that I need to have in order to do that? Well, first is we have to have the GitHub account. We've already covered that pretty good. The next thing I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need the Git CLI. And lastly, I like using VS Code. So if you don't already have Git installed, it does run on Mac, Windows, or Linux. If you go to git-scm.com slash downloads, it'll detect what OS you're using. You can click that download button. It's a pretty big installer, but I didn't change any of the settings or options. I just next, 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 yes to everything. So if you're new to Git, just go ahead and do that. That'll get you Git CLI installed on your computer. And then of course, you'll want to have VS Code. VS Code is going to make this super easy to work with Git and GitHub because it's integrated directly into VS Code. So since I already have Git and VS Code installed on my computer, I'm ready to get started working with this and start cloning this repository to my local computer. So I'll fire up the Git CLI. It looks just like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move into a working directory on my E drive. Let's make a folder real quick called GitHub demo and we'll change into GitHub demo. Now I'm ready to clone this repository to my local computer. So all I have to do to do that is say git clone and then little space. I'll jump back to the repository and you see this clone or download button right here. I'll click that and then I'll just click this little copy button right there. See, I'm clicking it a few times. Jumping back to the CLI, I'll paste this in, press enter. And just like that, I've cloned the repository to my local computer. See, look at this. I'll bring it onto the screen. There's e drive slash GitHub demo. There is PowerShell Meraki SDK and there's all the files that were part of that repository. Now here's how I can work with it in VS Code. I'll fire up VS Code real quick. And with VS Code fired up and everything is empty here, I'm gonna add a new folder to my workspace. This is gonna be that folder that I just cloned, that PowerShell Meraki SDK. When I click add to it, because this was cloned from GitHub, it's automatically already tracking all of the changes that I make. So if I just click on this Git Wi-Fi device stats for a second, I'll just tack on a random comment right here and I'll save this file. Notice what happened under this little branches section, this source control section now shows us this little one item here. If I click on that, it now has detected there's been changes to this file that I was using. If I wanna see what those changes are, what's really cool, like I can click on this here and it brings up a little split screen view and shows you the lines that have been altered. In this case, not only did I add a random comment, it looks like it also removed some spacing because it did some formatting and prettying up of my code. So I like all these changes. Now that I'm ready to sync this back to the main repository, what I can do is I can stage this change into my little repo. And then lastly, I will commit this. When I commit this, this is going to tell it, okay, I am committed to making this a part of source control. I'm committed to making this the next version of my code. And in order to commit this, you do have to write a comment. So I will say added a random comment to file. I'll click the little check mark here to commit the file. And now I've made this commit in version on my local computer. Remember in our example, we had the master file that we had synced to our local computer and we would make our own versions. Well, what I've done now is I've just made my own version. I'm still at this little circle. My next step is to move this back into the master branch. So all I have to do to do that is click this little dot, dot, dot right here and say sync. This tells you we're gonna push and pull commits to the master branch and I'll say, okay, it's thinking up here. And just like that, it's done. Let's go back to GitHub, refresh. And if I scroll down, look at that. Added a random comment to file. Let's bring up the code. And there's random comment right there on line 44. So now anybody else who's following this or tracking this code can get this synchronized change when they are working with these two. The real magic with GitHub comes into play in the fact that anybody can now contribute to this code and we can all merge our changes back together. But even cooler, it's not specific to just Python or C-sharp files, it will track literally anything. So if you grab the running configs off a Cisco iOS device, dump it to a text file, you can track changes on those iOS configs. It's a free tool that you can start using right now in your VS Code environment. 
So I'd highly encourage you to take advantage of this, poke around, spend the 15 minutes to learn just how you can get it working. Because like I say, I use this thing every day. And, what, and one of the ways that I may use this is I may be working on it on my Windows machine at work. I'll push something up to the repo come home and then sync my Linux machine to that repo, which means I get all the changes that I did during the day and I can continue working on it on a completely different machine. It's a beautiful thing to be able to manage different versions of your code and just work on it with a centralized platform like that. So that's GitHub with VS Code. Thanks for stopping by y'all.